No, no, no. No, no, stay. Stay, why is she leaving? Is it a she even? I can't tell from here, just... Get her back. Get her back. Try. Please, just try. Without her, you've got no chance, mate. To just do something. Right? Wave your arms about or shout or scream. Just do something for God's sake. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to shout at you. It's, it's just she's not coming back, is she? No, oh, I don't know. Maybe they take turns. I can't tell them. Still figuring this situation out. All she seems to do is check the monitors and press the buttons that go beep, beep, beep. Three times. Always. But this time they didn't beep. And she didn't wait to write anything down on a clipboard. It's not looking good, is it? Well, come on. Challenge me like you always do. Anything I say, you say the opposite. That's how it's always been, right? If she comes back, I mean, when she comes back, it's game over, more or less. Unless you help them, let them know that you're still in there. Unless you fight, you hear me? Imagine I'm right there taunting you to do something, just do something. Can you hear me? No. No, this much I know you, you can hear me. Okay. Okay. Try this then. Make beautiful pictures in your head. Your brain can handle that, that's what I do. I replace the madness with beauty. I know you can hear me, so listen. You can't block me out. You can't interrupt. You can't wag your finger at me, spitting out every swear word in every language that you know. None of that. You are in my captive audience. You are in my thrall. I can't tell if you disapprove. Yeah, I hate my laugh. It really winds you up. Clip on the ear, kind of wind up, but it doesn't take much to wind you up. No matter what, you always wanted to know what was going on in here. Even in the middle of some red face and spitting and spewing spite, you always wanted to know what I was thinking. You're curious about what made me tick. Well, not now, obviously. Now it's just us. Look at you. Invaded and snatched of your everyday life. <laughs> Looking like some pod person. And pod is far more subtle word than bubble. Well, maybe bubble sounds cosier and more bearable. Things were different. We'll be in the same bubble, do you think? <laughs> Remember the pod people. Invasion of the Body Snatchers, only a classic. The 1956 version.
black and white. All science film. All science fiction films should be filmed in black and white. Makes it more real, somehow. And then the cheesy Donald Sutherland remake and the 1993 one, not great, but had its moments. I still watched it. It's the central metaphor that got me. An alien spore comes like a bad nightmare while you sleep and duplicates you <laughs> until you, the original you, disintegrates to dust. You can tell the real humans from the duplicates, except for their lack of emotions. <laughs> I found it strangely erotic, even at that age. I mean, what a film for a teenager. I'd watch it until the last credits rolled up like I was possessed. Now I know why. And that's why you never wanted to watch it. Because I loved it. Two minutes in and you're yelling, Doctor Who ripoff! Cardboard actors in cardboard sets! Because I was obsessed with it. Because I got the metaphor and you didn't. <laughs> How I loved saying metaphor and watching your face as you try to figure out the word. Failing. Failing to hide you stupid. Your ignorance. Invasion of the Body Snatchers is not science fiction. Not for me. I knew that kind of paranoia. I knew that kind of fear. That feeling that something could come in the night and just steal the real me. I think of all the years when you thought I was the one invaded by an alien force. How helpless you felt, trying to figure me out. I understand that torture now. Now that the roles are reversed. Is she coming back? Oh, thank God she's coming back. Well, at least they're doing something. You know, activity's good. You've always hated stillness. You, you, know, you had to have the TV on all the time and the radio and God save the Queen and the World Service and on and on. Any sign of her? No? I forgot to tell her to turn the volume up. There's no point wittering on if you can't hear me. I wish you had some vibrant colour around you. Some beauty. Everything just looks so industrial. I mean, I used to always make my room look beautiful, do you remember? Every time you thrashed it, I made it beautiful again. <laughs> I've got this picture in my room. That's the first thing I see when I get up. It's not mine. It belongs to a friend. And this image has nearly every colour on it. It's a painting of two Hindu gods. Or rather, one body split into two halves. You've got the masculine side on the right and the feminine side embraced in union. It's real... I mean, this image dates date back centuries. Lord Shiva and Parvati. It's real. People worship this beautiful image. Ah, Danarish Wara. It's not just male and female. It's all about the merging of the masculine energy with the feminine. I know all about Arden and Ishwara. It was like I was being held in that embrace. Not an alien invasion at all, just... 
life and all its beauty. That image is everything. I see it everywhere I go. All this time, not knowing that the real me, essential me, is as old as time. But at last I found it. Just in time. I nearly died that night. You know the night. You chucked me out and you never wanted to see me again. There was that finality about your anger, like something inside of you finally broke. So yeah, everything I had in a bin bag and off I went. And just like you said to me so many times before, someday you'll find me lying in a ditch. <laughs> and just like you said, it didn't take long. You see, the ugliness of life disgorges a person, or two, or three, or in my case, a drunken gang fueled by cheap booze and hate. Hate and hit after hit after hit until your head splits and your blood mingles with the dog shit on the cobble pavement. <laughs> Maybe they didn't like the purple sequins on my dress. I was. I was so proud of the, for stitching them on. Or maybe it was the glittery silver thigh high boots that wind them up like crazy. Yeah, that brute force was somehow familiar. I lay there for a long time thinking beautiful thoughts until it all went dark. 38 stitches to reform the skull. Time he healed the damaged nerves. And torn ligaments took months of physiotherapy. <laughs> A patched up doll. Until slowly, I could dance again. No one can stop me from dancing. Well, you know that, don't you? Deep inside. That oatmeal beige wall, I can think of at least five ways to shut it up. And maybe you like it. It suits you, sir. You're not the type. You won't go gently into the night. That's what I thought. All these five years self-healing. I had it all planned out. The grand gesture. My unconditional, heartfelt forgiveness of you. I'll say I forgive you. Your face will screw up. Something bitter builds on your tongue. And I cower, secretly valiant as you lash out. That was the predictable dynamic. Not this pod person. That spore has grabs you by the balls and it won't let go. <laughs> Who'd have thought all this science fiction would have prepared me for this? To boldly go where we, you and I, have never gone before. 
perhaps seek destinies elsewhere. For now, we'll just sit and wait.